Hi guys, Francis Gray here and today I will be building the mummy kit in the likeness of Boris Karloff from the classic Universal Movie Monsters. <laughs> so yeah, so the next model I've decided to tackle is the classic mummy. Uh, first played by Boris Karloff in the classic uh, Universal Movie Monsters. Uh, this kit uh, was made by Geometric Design and it's a vinyl kit and it's a 1 to 8 scale. So the actual kit itself is a fantastic likeness of, uh, of Boris Karloff. So obviously there's the torso, those are the hands, those is uh, his, uh, his left leg and uh, bottom of his torso, there's his left leg, that's his uh, right shoulder, his left shoulder and then there's the face there. So yeah so you've got two options, now I could have uh, pack this out with uh, shredded paper and packed uh, as tightly as possible uh, that works fine or I can opt for filling it with resin so I'm thinking about doing that uh, in the meantime I've made this uh, which is basically a base to clamp uh, like key parts to uh, so I can pour the resin in and then leave it to uh, leave it to harden. So I'll go ahead and attach all these now, and then we'll uh, mix up the resin. Hi okay, guys. So as you can see there, all the main key parts are all front facing. All the holes are facing up. All are connected to these upright pegs with some clamps. Some clamps are held in place with other clamps. So. It helps keep them all uh, more upright. Uh, now the resin is a two-part mixture and it's this stuff here which is uh, Polycraft uh, SG2000 PU casting resin. Uh, got these cups that I'm going to mix it in. Now I usually keep uh, the cups in two by twos. Uh, it's mainly just because it's a lot more strength and a lot more steadier. Where the last thing you want is uh, one of these to crack and then you got resin everywhere. So one another, another part I'd uh, strongly recommend is if you're going to do this, wear gloves. I'm not wearing gloves at the moment but I will be when I'm actually mixing this. So yeah, you don't want resin on your skin because it dries your skin out and it's horrible. Okay guys, so there you go, all the resin is in there now. Now all we have to do is just leave it to uh, cure and uh, I'll get back to you after that. Hi guys, so the resin is now set, so the kit is rock hard. So you don't have to worry about it warping or bending uh, later on down the line, which is quite famous for these vinyl kits. Uh, the only problem with uh, filling up with resin is sometimes it's hard to eyeball where the line should come to. So like with the torso there, that's fine. Uh, so I can just do like a clean cut uh, and just get rid of this vinyl and then this is uh, nice and solid, I don't have to worry about it. Unfortunately with like the, uh, the, 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 the waste here, uh, it's uh, I've gone a little bit over this line, so it's about that about that up to there is resin. So simple enough, just uh, just need to get a hacksaw and just cut it clean, uh, and then uh, yeah, it's it's there's no problem with that really. Uh, same with the arms here, uh, they they fill up with uh, resin really quickly. So same again, I'll have to cut it from there. Uh, so that means there's a bit of a wastage there. But obviously you can always, if you pop this out, you can always add this in with uh, 
like future resin that you mix because resin will stick with resin so just plop it in wherever you mix in and uh, as long as the hole's big enough to house this you know it's better I'd rather use it than waste it uh, there's the head so same again just a little bit over so it goes up to there just get a hacksaw blade and then cut it clean and there's no problems and same with the arm there so that's a little bit there so yeah so all in all uh, it's on track uh, next step is to cut off these edges and then uh, see how the kit should uh, fit together so I went ahead and cut off all the excess parts so all the parts are nice and uh, smooth now uh, I quickly put them on me the, uh, on me sander so it's just nice and flushed now uh, these are the excess parts so we can just get rid of those uh, getting back to the actual kit itself the uh, the best way to attach these is to add a drill and pin system inside so it's basically just drill uh, two thin holes uh, that's the same diameter as like a piece of uh, scrap metal and then you insert those inside uh, glue them in place and then do matching holes on the torso and then put them together and then add your glue so it's kind of like a peg system so I'll go ahead and do that now and then I'll show you the finished results Hi guys, so all the main parts have now been drilled and pinned so as you can see there, matching holes one peg this side, one peg that side and then the line up to be fitting together and then like that for example uh, obviously the head as well this uh, shoulder connects to that this shoulder and peg connects to that uh, obviously the leg as well and then on a side note we've got the the hands that fit up into that one and then this one fits into that one so yeah so it's really simple it's literally just uh, super glue on the peg super glue in the hole and then put the two together and uh, and off you go so I'll go ahead and do that now and then I'll finish I'll show you the finished result. So there you go guys, so there's all the parts now glued in place. Uh, it's all nice and rock solid thanks to the pins. Uh, there is a few seam lines, obviously, but that comes to be expected of these uh of these kind of kits. Uh basically I'll fill those in with uh Aves Epoxy model and clay. And then, uh, and then the figure should be uh, ready for Grey Prime. Hi guys, so for the next part I'd like to talk about the base. Now this is a base that I pre-made. Uh, basically it's exactly the exact same way as I made uh, the last two uh, horror models for my collection. Which was uh, Michael Myers and uh, Chucky. Uh, basically it's just uh, two strips of wood. Uh, routed, all cut to the same bit size base. There's different size length tops depending on where it's going to sit in the glass cabinet. Uh, but all of them have been routed the exact same edges. So, just just simple in nature, I suppose. But as long as they're universal. Uh, my plan is I'm going to have like a hieroglyphic backdrop. I'm going to have a raised base. Uh, and then I'm going to have a sarcophagus that's open. Uh, Boris Karloff as the mummy is going to be coming out of the sarcophagus. And then there's going to be a few other little Egyptian like knickknacks uh, here, there and everywhere. Just basically to build up the scene. Uh, for a long time I was thinking how could I do the hieroglyphics. And then I was thinking should I etch into the wood itself. Uh, should I bury some screws in there and uh, put some modelling clay over the top and then sculpt the details in? So I was thinking long and hard how I could do that. And by chance, while looking around in a uh, charity store, charity shop, I, uh, I actually came across this. So that is absolutely perfect. And, be and the best thing about it is... It's the exact exact right size. 
so I don't have to shave anything off the sides, uh, I don't have to sand anything down, I don't have to add anything, it's literally the exact right dimensions that I need. Now it is a bit raised up off the floor, obviously, but I plan on adding more to the floor anyway. So this was actually a godsend, this uh, was actually perfect. Uh, talking about the other accessories, now in the meantime, while I've uh, been sorting this kit out, I found a partially built or pre-owned uh, the Mummy model kit from Polar Light. Now this was the Brandon Fraser version in the 90s. Uh, the reason I wanted this was mainly for the sarcophagus, but uh, but all the other accessories I can see probably coming in useful. So as you can see, it's it's been partially pre-built. So we've got the sarcophagus. Obviously, comes in two parts. Now I think Boris Karloff is slightly too tall for this so I might have to cut off a section here and then uh, model like a, a little bit longer uh, and then add some Aves epoxy on the side to sculpt in the, ex the hidden details and I might have to do the same here so I'll cut that there and then uh, basically just stretch it out so it matches. So that's going to be the sarcophagus. Now there is uh, this is the 90s mummy but I don't think there's going to be any room to have him anywhere in the base. So I might keep this for a future project. This might be another mummy or it might be a zombie or I have no idea yet. But it'll come in handy I'm sure. Uh, then we've got uh, more accessories. So we've got more bandage that might come in handy. Uh, we've got the mummy logo. I might use that. I'm not too sure yet. I might uh, think on that. And uh, there's like a destroyed N as well. So there's a few bits in there that are coming useful. Uh, and the last bit is the base. Now that base will work really good. Uh, the, main, the main idea is... Move the sarcophagus out of the way. So the main idea is obviously I'm going to trim this off the back. Uh, so that's a little bit more flush up to the back, so this will be a little bit further back as well. Uh, and then obviously once that has been attached there, there'll only be like a tiny, tiny bit to fill in. And the bottom part of this, it's all like, uh, it's like, I suppose like straight edges. So I could just put some model and clear down and just shove a coffee stirrer or maybe two in there and then it'll match up perfectly. So yeah, so I'm trying to think what is any other accessories that I have. Uh, I'm not going to end up using all of these. Uh, it's just going to be the odd one. So I've also got a Anubis uh, warrior statue. I was thinking maybe having him at the front there, maybe. It all depends. It might be a little bit too crowded with that. I've also got a statue of Ra. But out of the two of them, I think I prefer Anubis. Uh, then I've got this, which could just be like poking out with some sand or something. Same again, no guarantees I'm going to use that. And then I've got this here. Same again, could just be a little trinket somewhere that's just laying down. So yeah, so all in all, I think this is going to be a, a fun build. So the next part is going to be attaching this onto here. So the best way to do that is uh, obviously put loads of uh, glue on the back, probably PVA glue, well wood glue really. Uh, but I, I was thinking about drilling some holes here, there and everywhere, just maybe three. Uh, and then uh, burying their screw heads inside and then... Uh, Aves epoxy model and clean over and then sand that smooth. So yeah, so I'll crack on with that now and then show you the finished results.
So there you can see guys, uh, it's now stuck in place. Uh, I've filled in that where the three holes were, that's uh, housing the screw heads inside. Uh, it looks fine as is, if I'm truthfully honest, it just looks like it's part of the uh, motif, but these two here, I might keep this one as is, but these two here, I might put a little bit of paint over just to try and blend it in a little bit. But this one here, I think I might just leave that visible because it looks like it's part of the the decor, I suppose. So, as you can see there, it's nice and solid. It's not going to go anywhere. So that's a huge part of the uh, job already done. Alright guys, so as you can see there, the back part is now nice and secure. Uh, the next part is the base. We need to get this uh, put in place. Uh, I'm thinking about cutting off maybe this back row here, make it nice and flush, and seeing how far that will sit back, because I really want to house these uh, eroded stairs. I think that's a nice detail to keep. Uh, this mummy uh, low, uh, nameplate, I'm not, I'm still not too sure. Uh, I might keep it. Uh, if so, I'll have to keep that as is, because obviously it's a peg system from the back of that onto there. So I might keep that in place, I'm not too sure. I might go ahead and paint this up in the meantime and see how I feel about it. Uh, sorry. Sod's law won't go in. Uh, I also really like this end as well. Uh, but I'm not right too sure where I wanna, if I'm going to keep that right there. Because I still need to find some place for this Anubis Warrior. So I don't know if I should put him right at the back here. And then there's the end, like, just in front of it, which is probably my most favourite at the moment. Because originally I was going to put them at the front, but I think I prefer them a little bit more at the back. So I'll go ahead in the meantime and I'll I'll cut this straight and then, uh, and then we'll see how we feel after that. So here we go for the next part. As you can see, both sides have uh, been cut off. Now the only problem with that is it's leaving this uneven, so this will probably have to be filled in with uh, a piece of wood or something that will attach directly to the base and then it will just sit in place. So as you can see there, it lines up nice. Now there's no point having all this rubble in, like, going into the wall, so I might as well model it from the front like that and then think tape the wall down to it so it'll just be this pie and I can cut this off if I want it to uh, so it's not as as uh, as uh, like going up into it but I suppose once the modeling clay has been put over you're not going to see it anyway so I think the more important role is to get some wood down and get this secured in place now this gap here now that could actually be filled in with some of the uh, some of the off cut bits from this so there's quite a few parts here and there so yeah so I'm pretty sure that I can make more detail with these off bits so but anyway before I get to that I'll, uh, I'll secure this in place and add some wood to fill it out So as you can see there, all the main parts of the, the scrap wood are in place now. Uh, they're all like flush with the uh, with the edge, so that'll make life a little easier later on when I need to fill those uh, fill those gaps in. So as you can see there, it fits uh, it fits nice and snug now. Uh, best way to connect this now would be uh, drill a couple of tiny little holes in the plastic. Uh, basically just to house some small nails that I'll uh, obviously hammer into the wood itself. 
Uh, I'll also probably add a coating of PVA glue to, to the wood uh, to help just basically keep it a little bit more stronger. So as you can see there guys, all the uh, nails are now hammered in place. Now I went a little bit wrong with this one, it bent over at the last second. But that's no big deal because that could just be modelled over. I could just put a bit of waves over that and make this, uh, this, this block here a little bit more pronounced I suppose. There's a million and one ways to hide that so I'm not worried about that. So next job will be to fill in and uh, fill in these seams. So I'm going to cut up some like rough bits of wood and then slot them in place. Uh, I obviously glue them and then uh, once all sides are built up uh, yeah so all I need to do is just some min minimal uh, filling after that so I'll crack on with that now and I'll show you the finished result so as you can see there guys I've built up a lot of these uh, these extra parts that were sawn off the side I've basically just uh, broke them up and built them up and uh, basically screwed the odd part down or nailed the odd part down. There's wood underneath as well, uh, filling it out. Uh, I've also filled in on the side, as you can see they're still gluing. It's all kinds of just little bits of off-cut wood that, uh, that I didn't need no more. Same with the other side, the other side's a bit, the other side's a bit cleaner. Uh, so yeah, so there's not much we can do with this now. Uh, I was thinking about just leaving this to fully dry. Once it's dried, I can then start uh, adding like Abe's epoxy model and clay uh, to fill in all these gaps and whatnot. Try and make it look a little bit more uh, connected to the main base. Uh, I've added two screws here. That's basically for the same job. It's basically just to house... Uh, the clay, something for the clay to hold on to. Uh, the next part of the build is uh, is the is the sarcophagus. Now I was thinking about putting the sarcophagus on this side, and then the Anubis warrior here, because there's quite a big gap here to fill in. So I thought he might look better there. Uh, but as you can see, there's a uh, there's Boris Karloff, and as you can see, he's kind of tall for that sarcophagus. So I'm thinking about making this longer. Okay guys, so it's been over 24 hours. Uh, so this is all nice and, uh, nice and rock hard, all the glue's dried. So it's a mixture of PVA glue in certain parts, and these siding parts here is mainly the... Uh, the contact cement glue that works best for cement for styrene. Uh, the next part of this will be filling in the sides. So I'll be doing that with probably uh, air dryer model and clay, or if not, the odd part might be uh, wood filler. So I'll see what I'll see. I get on with it, and then I'll let you know exactly what was what. Uh, the only other new thing. So I've been working on the mummy a little bit more. So as you can see there he's starting to come along. All the seams have been filled in with uh, Abe's epoxy. Now the only negative was uh, was when I poured the resin in the chest area. I think it must have reacted with some trapped air in there. Because it seemed to like suck it in a little bit. So the back part was actually like too sunken in. Now I know he's a decrepit mummy, so you could get away with it. That uh, you know, it's 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 just like a natural look. But it just bothered me because I know that it wasn't how the original kit was supposed to be. So I basically just went in with Aves epoxy, uh, sculpted uh, more details to line up with the other bandages, and then I just used some off-cut bits. Off the uh, off the nineties uh, Brendan Brendan Fraser mummy kit, so I just basically put that part there to make it look like a part that's unravelled and come out, and then this part is just over here to hide quite a chunk of that. That's going to be uh, 
lead up to that. Uh, so yeah, so I'll, 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 there's a few parts on the front I'll probably sculpt as well, just basically uh, bulk it up a little bit, uh, just so I can get away from that. Uh, it's unfortunate because I've never known resin to actually do this uh, to a vinyl kit before. So I don't know if I was just unlucky or there was something I missed or when I made it, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I was just a bit unlucky in that one. But with a bit of TLC, uh, I think it'll look, uh, it'll look great once finished. Hi right, guys, so as you can see there, it's all been uh, filled in with... Uh, with air drying model and clay, including the bottom there, I ended up putting some uh, screws on inside the wood so the clay had something to hold on to. Uh, but the rest of it just uh, more or less went on as normal. Now obviously this will shrink and parts will crack because that's uh, that's just what air drying model and clay does, unfortunately. But uh, once that does, I can just use a sand and block to smooth some parts down and then fill in any cracks with uh, regular wood filler. So we'll leave this uh, 24 hours and, uh, and we'll see what we're left with. So the air drying model and clay is had a couple of days to dry out and fully harden. Uh, this has worked out pretty nice. Uh, there was a few little bits of shrinkage and cracks here and there, but that's to be expected with air dry modeling clay. But it's a good clay to use for like to bulk over something. Uh, where the cracks are, where it came apart, uh, where it shrank, basically I filled those parts in with wood filler. Uh, I've also gone over a few of the nail heads with wood filler, I'd basically just to hide, try and hide it and mask it away. Uh, I filled in a few gaps on the front there, uh, there it is on the side, there it is on the other side. So I've took a sand and block to this and I've, uh, and I've just uh, cleaned off the excess dust. Uh, so the next stage will be, I, I don't want to paint over this because I like this as is. So I'm going to mask this off and then I'm going to grey prime uh, all this base. Uh, and then we'll uh, I'll show you the finished results. So as you can see there, guys, uh, the base is now being grey primed. Uh, there's from the first glance it's it's fine as is there's a little part here which I'll need to fill in with Aves epoxy and there's probably a tiny little bit of uh, ear right at the front where I might just add a little, little, a little tiny bit of Aves epoxy just add a little bit more detail because it looks a bit a bit meh, a little bit flat so yeah so besides that that part there and that part there, I think the uh, I think the the main base itself is finished. So I'll go ahead and I'll make those bits, and then we can start painting this. Hi guys, so as you can see there, the sarcophagus is uh, looking a bit longer now. So both parts basically had a 90 degree straight cut down, separating the bottom from the top on both sides. Uh, and then just use bits of scrap thin wood uh, to bridge the gap. Uh, super glued it in place. Uh, added a little bit of resin just to secure the odd part here and there. And then afterwards I just used Aves Epoxy Model and Clay to sculpt around all the different sides. Now at the naked eye it looks, uh, it looks like the pattern matches. But I'm, I'm pretty sure that once I've grey primed it there probably will be a few details that don't look right or uh, need sanding down or whatever. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll grey prime these two up now and then I'll see uh, how I feel afterwards.
Hi guys, so as you can see there, the mummy has had extra parts sculpted on there to basically build this collapsed area back up, both front and back. So it was a little bit more extra work, but uh, you definitely want to do it in the long run. There's no point doing all this work just to have a visible collapsed area. So yeah, so now that this is now filled out and uh, the clay is hardened, it's now time to go ahead and grey prime this. Uh, in the meantime, I've gone ahead and grey primed the uh, sarcophagus. Now as you can tell, you can still tell that that's different. So I might use this these lines that have uh, been sculpted in there, and I might use them as a new base for more clay to uh, connect to. So I'm going to try and add a little bit more clay and see if I can uh, model it a little bit better to try and hide these visible these visible lines. Uh, <clears throat> same with this one. This one matches a little bit better. I suppose once the paintwork's been on there uh, and it's all the same colour, it would look a lot better. But still, there might be the odd little bit of tweaking that I might do on that. So I'll go ahead and I'll do these and I'll grey prime uh, the mummy and I'll get back to you. Hi guys, so as you can see there, all the main parts are now grey primed. Uh, the sarcophagus looks a lot better now, because not only is it sitting flush with the top of the base, it also looks like it would uh, be big enough to house the mummy. Uh, the next part would be to lay base colours uh, and build up the paint, uh, like with highlights and dry brushing effects and stuff like that. Uh, but this video is getting kind of long now, so I thought I would cut this video short now uh, and then the painting up process will be part two. So if part two has already been filmed, there'll be a link in the description below, but if there's no link there, then I'm currently still working on it. So yeah, so if you like this, please click the like button, share on Facebook and Twitter because there's new people find my channel, which I'm always appreciative of, thank you very much. Uh, don't forget to add a comment if you got any suggestions or anything you would like to see. And uh, yeah, nothing else to say but thank you for watching and see you next time. Thank you very much. Goodbye.